My name's John, welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. I've had quite a lot of time on the workshop this weekend because Deb's wife wife's away on holiday in Spain. If you're watching this pet, I'd just like to say hello over at Soho. I do think you'll be watching it. Anyway, I've spent a lot of time in the garage this weekend, uh, mainly welding, welding aluminium motorbike casings up. I'll show a little bit of that. I modify some motorcycle fork yokes. I'll show that. I make a start on making a pull off. I pull the liners out of a cylinder block. Once again, I show a little bit of that. But the first thing I want to do is the draw for the more than right zero atone to micrometer. I'm looking here. Last week's prize was claimed. Uh, it's going to go to South Africa. It will be in the post this week. I haven't got around to posting it. I'm really sorry. Right, let's see what we've got. John Paul Williams. Right, John, all you have to do, send me an email with your address, and I'll get that micrometer in the post this week. And as I've just said, I will post that zero inch micrometer off to South Africa. It'll be in the post number one. The prize for this week's draw is a set of quarter work of taps and a lovely set of chestermen outside Calipas. I got these given, I got these given, I've got several sets of them and I have got two or three sets of those taps so I might as well give them away. As usual if you want a chance at winning them all you need to do is send me an email, that's my email address up there, all I need your name, your full name like John Mills, not just John, your name goes in the bucket, if it's drawn out I'll post the prize off. I've got some motorcycle fork yokes here. I've done a similar job to this before. What the lad wants to do is bore these yokes out to the same size as that. He's obviously going to put some, some bigger fork legs in. These are 30, 38 mil. That's probably inch and a half. There's inch and a half. 149. So inch and a half. We'll do it in metric. We'll measure it in zero. Measure these ones. There's four mil to come out of there, which is not a massive amount. There's quite a lot of material left around here, and he's quite happy safety wise to do that. It's for a scramble bike or some sort of trail bike. I'm going to make a, a mandrel to fit in there or a test piece to fit in there so I can bore these to size. I need to make some spacers to go in there because these actually clamp up onto the, the fork leg so I need spacers to go in there. I'll get some sort of idea how, how wide these are at least how wide the gaps are 2.8mm on that one 2.7mm so we need to make some pieces of aluminium to fit into there. I've got a set of Banggood gauge blocks um, I've got them to do a video on and I haven't done the video yet uh, so I can use these to accurately measure that gap we've got a reading at 2.8 on the vernier so if we get a 1mm in a 1.8 that should give me the, the 2.8 which it does here go in there that's a nice tight fit so if I machine something down to 2.8 mil good fit in there as well I've used these one or two times um, they're alright, they do exactly what they say, they're, they're not pristine they're not top class gauge blocks but for what I'm going to do they're certainly they're certainly good enough I will be going to do a little bit of video on them later on okay, so I can machine this down you know and hold that in the vice and machine that face down to get the 1.8 mil at the minute that's three and a half so we'll do that first then machine that piece of aluminium down 
to fit in there to use as a test piece. Right, this is 3.3 and I want 1.8 so I need half a mil off there. I touch that off, cut half a mil off and that will do for the space that they're going to the split in the yoke. Touch it off nice and gently. Put a half of a foot on. Okay, that's half the milk. Two point eight, one point eight, spot on. Do the other one because everything's on the on the same setting now. What I'm going to do is put both sort of clamp these onto the aluminium and I'm going to clamp both sets down and bore down through both sets at the same time. Just make it set up easier, I can bore two as quick as I can bore one. And I can look down here and I can see the bores are lining up absolutely spot on. So it'll be a simple matter to clamp things up, clamp the whole lot down and put a bore down straight through. First thing to do is drill this so I can put some clamp bolts in actually hold those in nice and tight. That looks really good. And that will throw there. See them on this side. It often pays to use a hammer instead of using your hand, it's, it's a lot less painful. This 
Actually looking good. Okay, so I'll put a one mil cut on first. It's gonna get us somewhere near. Nasty stingy stuff aluminium. It is possible to use a grain on a tool that will break the chip. Just about there, and his hair off it, not that much. As long as the fault legs are a reasonable fit in there because it has got quite a, a large clamping area. As long as they're a reasonable fit in there, because it do clamp onto the fault legs, that's all the work. Not quite. Another funny's hair. Pretty good. Settle for that. One more whispery fine cut. So in fact we've actually made a go no go gauge. If we can hold it out to that size and then that's the actual the fit. I've got two two parallels here, I just bits of tube that are machine square into the same length. I'm going to put one underneath one end with a bolt right down through it then that one underneath there with a couple of toe clamps on and I can 
put my boring bar on my boring head straight down through there. It's going to be done that way up because that's basically this face here. I've had a fade across it and it all seems flat. So I'm going to mount it onto there and bore from the top. That's the size we need to bore to. It's a little bit tight on there. Got a nasty flash up the inside of the pipe. So it'll be an ideal chance to give on you. Die drain of the gun so we can knock that off. Certainly made sharp work of that. is looking not too bad. It's just nipping on there quite nicely. These are the same spaces I used when I did the last ones, but they were smaller ball. To line this up now with a quill I'll just use a, probably a, a chuck with a tape around to line that up. Clamp this down then we can set the bone head up and bone it out. So you're doing the two at once it means I can, break, I can break two at once or I can get two done in the same time as it would take to do one. Anyway. I've left that clamp board slightly loose so this can't move around a little bit and all I want to do is basically line that up with the centre of the, the machine which is more or less, in fact it is just like that so that's tightened down now I can tighten this clamp board here put another clamp on there and then basically that's got to be in line, everything's it's on a tape, that's where it can't be anything but we'll put another twirl clamp on here and then start boring it right, I've got it fairly well clamped down now, it's not going to go anywhere I'm going to take a light cut out of there and just see what sort of result I get, I've done them before using this boring tool and it worked out quite well I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can actually see on its first cut It's cutting all the way around, which is always a good sign. It's a little bit of an interrupted cut because obviously it's got the, the split in there for the clamping.
just about all the way through. I think I'm just going to get a look clearance on this tool. It's going to be very clear. Funny's here. It's actually hitting that part of the tool there. I think I'll just grind it a little flat on there just so it clears it. I've done what I should have done the first place and put along that cutter in. I'll be a little bit more spring in it, but we're running machine in aluminium so it should uh, it should be alright. It's certainly cutting quite nicely. Put the lovely finish in there. Still using me cheap and cherry bango power feed. I haven't got it finished yet. I was going to make a proper mountain for it, but now I got round to it. It is doing the job. That's the speed controller there. It's been powered by an 18 volt cordless drill battery. Certainly getting near there within 0.5 of a mil. Let's creep up on this next one down with bollocks. small side of the piece we made that doesn't quite go in I've measured this and it is another point two out of it if I put one more cut on there which is point one that should take the point two out and that should be dead on size That's absolutely dead on size. Now that would go in there. I'm going to put one more cut down on the same setting just to clean that up. Happy with that. And that's still taking the whisper out of there. Right, we'll definitely settle for that. Just got the rest of <coughs> stuck. Just got the rest side to do now. Putting a lovely finish in there as well. Very happy with that.